Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the addition rule and probability using Venn diagrams. In the previous video, I talked about addition rule as well as some other rules in probability. And before I move on to the next rule, the multiplication rule, I wanted to show you how you can use Venn diagrams to organize your information because you might see the Venn diagrams in the context of the problems you'll be solving. So we're going to take a look at the addition rule. And there are two parts of the addition rule depending on whether your events are mutually exclusive or not. In the event that they are mutually exclusive, which means they have no common elements to both, the probability of A or B will be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. So the example that we did in our last video was you choose a card from a standard deck. What is the probability of choosing a diamond or a heart? We know that these are mutually exclusive because you can't have a card that is a diamond and a heart, so they're mutually exclusive. So I'm going to show this information and the probabilities in a Venn diagram. And I've talked about Venn diagrams in a previous video or two, where we were um, using Venn diagrams to organize numbers of elements in a, in a group. Now we're going to use Venn diagrams to organize the probabilities of various groups. Because these two groups, A and B, which are hearts and diamonds, are mutually exclusive. They don't intersect at all. There's no common elements to both. So they don't overlap. So we have two separate circles to represent those. And what I'm going to do is put the probabilities in those uh, circles for choosing a heart or choosing a diamond. So we talked about how what the probability of choosing a diamond is. There are 13 diamonds in a deck. So probability of choosing one of those 13 out of 52 cards available. If we reduce that, it will be one quarter, and I'm going to write that as a decimal, 0.25. So the probability of choosing a diamond is 0.25, so I'm going to put that probability in the circle. We do the same thing for hearts. It's also 13 hearts in the deck, so its probability is also one quarter or 0.25. So the probability of choosing a heart is 0.25. This box represents any other possible events, which would be choosing a club or a spade. And all of these will have to add up. Remember, in the last video, I said all of the probabilities with all possible outcomes have to add up to a 1. So notice that these add up to 0.5. So the probability of choosing a heart or a diamond will be equal to the probability of choosing a heart, which is 0.25, plus the probability of choosing a diamond, which is 0.25, which is 0.5. So this plus this is 0.5. And the other possible outcomes would be the, the rest. 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5. So the probability of choosing something other than a heart or a diamond would be 0.5. Now let's look at how we do the Venn diagrams if they're not mutually exclusive, which means that the circles overlap. The other part to our addition rule in probability is when we have um, outcomes that are not mutually exclusive, which means they share common elements, then our rule changes a little bit. The probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B but then you have to subtract the probability of A and B. So for example, if we choose a card from a deck of cards, what's the probability of choosing a diamond or a face card? This is different than the last example because there are common elements. There are face cards that are also diamonds. So these two events are not mutually exclusive, so we need to use this formula. What I'm gonna do is find each of these probabilities and then we're gonna set up a Venn diagram. So the probability of choosing a diamond, 13 diamonds in a deck, and I'm going to leave it without reducing it because I want a common denominator when I add these probabilities. The probability of choosing a face card, there is face card is jack, queen, and king, and there are four suits, so three times four is there's 12 face cards in a deck. 
and what's the probability of choosing a diamond that's also a face card or a face card that's a diamond so diamond and face card there's a jack queen king diamond so there's three of them so that's the probability of choosing a diamond and a face card now let's make our venn diagram Because these two circles or outcomes overlap, I'm going to draw them like this. So this is going to represent diamonds. This is going to represent my face cards. And the way that we're going to do our Venn diagram, I'm going to keep my probabilities as fractions here. Um, you could reduce them. You could change them to a, a decimal. I don't typically change them to decimals unless they work out to nice even decimals. So I'm just going to leave them with 52 as my common denominator. The probability of this intersection, so a card that's both a diamond and a face card, is 3 over 52. So we put that value in, that probability in, that intersection. So this part here represents the probability of this and that. So it's the probability of diamond and face card. Now, to get the probability of a diamond but not a face card, I'm going to subtract 352s from 1352s because there's 13, uh, the probability of a diamond is 13 over 52. What's the probability of a diamond that's not a face card? We would subtract that and it would be 10 over 52. In other words, a diamond, there are 10 cards that are diamonds but that aren't face cards. Similarly, a face card that's not a diamond, well, if there's 12 in total and three are face cards, that means there's nine that aren't diamonds. So there's nine face cards that aren't diamonds. So the probability of choosing a face card that's not a diamond would be nine over 52. So this now represents the probability of a diamond or a face card. And so if we add these three values up, we would get 10 over 52 plus three over 52 plus 9 over 52, and that's 22 over 52, which represents the probability of a diamond or a face card. So that's one way we could find that probability. If I were to use the formula to find the probability of a diamond or a face card, I could use this formula. So the probability of a diamond plus the probability of a face card minus the probability of a diamond and face card. So using the values that I obtained, there are, this probability is 13 over 52. This probability was 12 over 52 minus three over 52 because we don't want to count the Jack, Queen and King of Diamonds twice. And that value would be the same as what we tamed up here. 25 minus three, 22 over 52. So it's another way of calculating or showing the probabilities. So we can use the formula or we can use the Venn diagram. If we wanted to know what the probability would be of not choosing a diamond or a face card, that's going to be all of these options out here. And remember, all of our possible outcomes have to add up to one. So to find what the probability outside of those circles, we would just take this probability from one. So we would take one and subtract this probability. So one minus 22 over 52 is 52 over 52 minus 22 over 52, which would be 30 over 52. So everything outside of those circles, the probability of not choosing a diamond or face card would be 30 over 52. Again, you can leave the fraction unreduced, you can reduce it, or you can even change it to a decimal. Let's take a look at a few more examples. Another example from the previous video says 60% of families in a neighborhood have a dog, 45% have a cat, and 20% have both. What's the probability that a family chosen at random would have a cat or a dog? So let's just write these probabilities. The probability of them having a dog is 60%. I'm just going to write that as a decimal. The probability of them having a cat is 45%, so 0.45. And the probability of uh, both, which is a dog and a cat, is 0.2. So let's represent this in a Venn diagram. These are not mutually exclusive because 
they can people can have a cat and a dog so there's elements in both so one circle is going to represent dogs and the other circle overlaps that because there's overlapping or intersection of the two groups now when we fill in the values we need to um, start with this part here we know the probability of having a dog is 0.6 but that includes the ones that have a cat and a dog so the probability of having a dog and a cat represents this intersection that's 0.2 and we know that probability plus this part people that have a uh, probability of the people that have a dog only that whole thing has to add up to 0.6 so the probability of having a dog only is 0.4 similarly the probability of having a cat only would be 0.45 minus 0.2 is 0.25 so a cat and a dog is 0.2 cat only is 0.25 so that those add up to 0.45. So now if I want to know the probability of someone having a cat or a dog, I can just add all of these up. The probability of a dog or a cat will be 0.4 plus 0.2 plus 0.25, which is 0.85. We would get the same answer if we plug these values into our formula. So the probability of a dog or a cat the probability of a dog plus the probability of a cat minus the probability of a dog and a cat. So that would be 0.6 plus 0.45 minus 0.2 and we get 0.85 that way. You can approach these problems using the formula or using the information from your Venn diagram. And then if we want to know what this represents, these are the people don't, that don't have a cat or a dog, we just take this total and subtract it from 1 so that means that probability of a family chosen at random not having a cat or a dog would be 0.15 or 15 percent. Let's do one last example. Another question that we did in the last video, the probability that James will study on Friday night is 0.4. The probability that he will play video games is 0.6. Then instead of saying what the probability that he'll do both, which is what happened in our last example, they tell us that probability that he will do one or the other or both. So at least one of the activities is 0.8 and they're asking us to find the probability that he will do both activities. So let's just write the probabilities that we know. The probability that he will study is 0.4. The probability that he'll play video games is 0.6. And this probability is that he'll do one or the other or both. So at least one, which means study or play video games. And what we're finding is the probability that he'll do both. So study and play video games, that's what we're finding. These two events are not mutually exclusive because he might study and play video games. So our two circles are gonna represent studying and video games and we know that he could do both. And this is actually what we're gonna be trying to find the prob this probability. In order to find this intersection, I know that this plus this minus that will equal the 0.8. So 0.4 plus 0.6 minus this intersection I'll call x has to equal 0.8. So 1 minus x is equal to 0.8 and therefore x will be equal to 0.2. So the probability of doing both is 0.2. The probability of only studying, remember 0.2 plus something has to equal 0.4, so this is 0.2. And the probability of only playing video games would be 0.6 minus 0.2, which is 0.4. So you can see that all of these add up to the total of one or the other or both of 0.8. And again, if we wanna know what's the probability of him doing none of those activities, we would take this total of 0.8 and subtract it from one to get the probability of him not doing video games or studying. So you might see Venn diagrams when you're doing probability questions, or you might be asked to give Venn diagrams with all of these values filled out. So hopefully this is helpful for you. And now I'm gonna move on to the multiplication rule of probability in my next video.